أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وهو الذي جعل لكم النجوم لتهتدوا بها في ظلمات البر والبحر قد فصلنا الآيات لقوم يعلمون وهو الذي أنشأكم من نفس واحدة فمستقر ومستودع قد فصلنا الآيات لقوم يفتهون وهو الذي انزل من السماء ماء فاخرجنا به نبات كل شيء فاخرجنا منه قدرا نخرج منه حبا متراكبا ومن النخل من تلها قنوان دانية وجنات من عناب والزيتون والرمان مشتبها وغير متشابه انظروا الى ثمره اذا اثمر وينعه ان في ذلك لايات لقوم يؤمنون صدق الله العظيم You must have noted all these three ayat which I have just recited start with the same verse huwa allazi huwa allazi huwa allazi Now actually what is tawhid Tawhid is that whatever is happening is in this universe although it is happening according to certain laws of nature and these laws of nature science has investigated and is investigating knowing more and more of them then exploiting them more and more but the result is that the modern scientific rationalism or if you allow me to call it modern scientific ignorance is that we tend to believe that these things are happening by on their own automatically no divine will no divine command no divine permission everything happening by its own simple laws of nature working automatically thus we go farther away from allah subhanahu wa taala we are diving deep into the laws of the nature we are knowing more and more of them we are exploiting them science is advancing and we are you know even conquering the space but you know we are going farther and farther and farther away from allah subhanahu wa taala here we know allah says it is allah who is doing it he doesn't say that these laws of nature which you have discovered are wrong it is happening according to the laws but who made the laws and not only that he made the laws but also is controlling he can you know break the laws whenever he likes so that is actually tawhid you can join these thing together this is science this we know the laws of the nature we are investigating these phenomena we are knowing more and more but you know the decisive will is of allah it is his command he is doing it hol ladhi ja'ala lakum an-nujum wa tahtadu biha fi zulubat al-barr wal bahr it is he who has made for you the stars so that you get the guidance through them in the darknesses of the land as well as the sea qad fassalna al-ayat li qawmi ya'lamun and we have detailed our revelation for people who know or who want to know wa huwa alladhi anshaakum min nafsin wahida it is he who has raised you and created you from one being fa mustaqarrum wa mustauda then there is an abode a lodging place and a repository now the meanings of these two words what do they connote there is def- difference of opinion among the mufassirin mustaqar is some place where you live you stay long sort of a permanent abode 
Mustada, where you keep something for some time, temporarily. Then there are three views among the Mufassirin. Mustakar is Akhra. The hereafter is the Mustakar. The permanent abode is Akhra, not this dunya. And this dunya is Mustada. We are here temporarily. This is not our abode. This is not permanent lodging place for us. This is a temporary stage here that we are having. The other opinion, Mustakar is Akhra. Mustada is Qabr, in which you are placed for this period of intervening between your death and resurrection. So this is the repository where you have been placed. And the third opinion is that Mustakar is dunya, and Mustada is the womb of the mother. There we remain for a while, for nine months. That was a temporary place to stay, and then you know Mustakar was dunya, because we had to stay here. Say for 60 years, 70 years, 80 years, 40 years. So these are the three opinions. It is he who raised you from one being, one living organism. Nafsin wahida. From mustaqarru wa mustada. Then he has given you the permanent abode also and a temporary place of repository. We have explained our revelations for people who understand. And it is He who is sending down water from the height, from the sky. He brings the rain. Or those the water from the oceans which is evaporating and going up. And then you know it condenses in the atmosphere to become you know the clouds. And the winds are taking the clouds far off. It's okay, you know it. There is no contradiction. But actually this whole system is being controlled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you keep Allah along with these scientific phenomena in your mind, both simultaneously, then it is Sahid. If you just ignore Allah, it is going on by itself. And all your attention is focused on these physical phenomena, scientific phenomena, then you drift away. And you just lose sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is actually going astray. Why is it he who sends down water? Then we bring out with it, with this water, the vegetation of everything. Then you know we, we bring out from the earth the green crop. And then we grow the, 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 you know, the grain. The close clustered grain. And from the date palms, from the space thereof, come forth thick clustered dates. Low hanging. And then we have created gardens of grapes. And of olive. And pomegranate. They look similar to each other. But they are also dissimilar. What does it mean? You know, from one, you know, plant, one tree, the pomegranates, they, they appear to be very close and very similar to each other, but in taste, they are different. Unzuru ila samarehi. Look with attention ila, towards the fruit that it is bearing. Is a asmara when it bears the fruit. And the ripening of the fruit, this process is in your before your own eyes, it is going on. But who is doing it? Is it happening on its own, automatically, without any controller, without any creator? No. In Nafizalikum Layatilikomi In all these things there are signs for those who want to believe, who have the belief. They observe this. And their conviction in Allah and His attributes increases. A scientist who is a moment scientist, when he observes all these phenomena, you know, his estimation of Allah becomes greater and greater. Oh, he is all powerful. He can do everything. He is all wise. But you know who doesn't believe in Allah? He is knowing all these laws and phenomena and science and the, and the laws of nature, but he is not. No, he doesn't believe in Allah. And he is not estimating him as the omnipotent, omniscient, 
and only present Allah. Bajalu lillah shurakal jinn. Another form of their shirk was that they had designated to jinns to be equals to Allah. Bajalu lillah shurakal jinn. Wa khalaqahum, although Allah has created them. He created you, He created the jinns also. You are also creator of Allah, and they are also the creator of Allah. So why do you hold them as high as associating them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wa kharaku lahu banina wa banad. And they have concocted for Allah sons and daughters. The Christians say that Jesus was the begotten son of God. And there had been a sect among the Jews who said that Ezra, Ruzair alayhi salatu wa salam was son of Allah. And only these people, you know, the pagan Arabs, they used to say, these deities, these goddesses, Lat and Uzra and Manal, they are daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they thought that angels are daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَخَرَقُوا لَهُ بَنِينَ وَبَنَاتٍ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ Without any knowledge. What is the basis? On what authority are you saying it? Have Allah said it so in any of His scriptures? In Torah, in, in Bible, anywhere. The Kharakulahu Banina wa Banatim Bigari Ilmin Subhanahu wa Ta'ala Amma Yasifun. Glory to him. And he is far beyond much high and exalted than what they are attributing to him. Badiru Sabawati Vallarb. Now this is the word you know. Creation ex nihilo. Ibda means creating without any matter. And khalq means to create something from something. Khalq and ibda, or ijad, or taqween, three words. Ibda, ijad, taqween, they mean the same. Khalq, ijad, ibda, and taqween means to create something out of nothing. This is bid'ah, ibda. That is why we call bid'ah, that you have, you know, innovated something in, in religion. Which has no basis, no roots. You should have some, you, whatever you want to do, there must be some root, there must be some basis, some source in Quran or in Hadith, Sunna, or in the practice of the companions of the Prophet. But if you are, you know, inventing some other ceremony, some other ritual, which has no roots, so it is bid'ah. In this saying, Ibda was creation ex nihilo. Badiru samawati wal he is the originator of the heavens and the earth. Anna yakulu lahu waladun. How can there be a son or a daughter for him? Walam takul lahu sahiba. When there has been no wife for him. Either you believe in a wife also. But at least the pagan Arabs didn't believe in any wife. But as I told you, the Egyptians, the Egyptian trinity included, they didn't call him the wife of God. But the mother God, God mother, God as father, Horus as the son of God, Isis as the God mother. And actually the Christians, you know, in the later days, not in the very beginning after, after Jesus alayhi salatu was salam, but later on, they also imitated, invented this trinity. And the trinity originally was God as father. Jesus as Son of God and Mary as God Mother. That was the Trinity. Just we, we have an example, you know, in the case of Ismailis. When they came over to India and they wanted to preach, you know, their own brand of Islam to the local Hindus here, they found that they believe in nine incarnations of God. This was an incarnation of God, Rama was an incarnation of God, and Krishna was an incarnation of God. So there are nine. They added Hazrat Ali as the tenth. Dasham Avatar. He is the tenth incarnation of God. So it became very close to their minds. It becomes very easily acceptable to them. Dasham Avatar. You believe in nine Avatars? You believe in nine, you know, gods incarnate? So, why not believe in one more? The same thing that the Christians did to spread their dogma, they imitated the dogma that was already existing in Egypt. So that was the Trinity to begin with. 
بجال اللہ شرکا الجن و خلا کہوں و خرق الح بنین و بلات بغیر علم سبحان و تعالی اما یسفون بدی و سماوات ولاقول الح ولادن ولن تک الح صاحبہ و خلا کا کل شاہی ہی ایز کریٹڈ ایوری تھنگ ایوری تھنگ ایکسپٹ ہیم از دی کریشن ہی از دی کریٹر دیٹ سال وہ ہوا بالکل شاہین علیم اینڈ از ناٹ دیٹ آفٹر کریٹنگ ایوری تھنگ ہی از ان اویئر آف اٹ نو ہی نوز ایوری تھنگ as we read that even if a leaf is dropping from the tree it is in his knowledge and the darknesses of the land earth or in the sea or ocean everything is in his knowledge zalikum allah rabbukum now this is introducing allah this is you know tawhid who is allah what are his attributes as we say amantu billahi kama huwa bi asmaihi wa sifatihi believe in allah is nothing unless you believe in all his attributes you know believe in god everybody has the belief in god but what are the attributes of allah whom we in whom in whom we believe so the attributes of allah amantu billahi kama huwa bi asmaihi wa sifatihi so these attributes of allah they are being explained one by one zalikum allah rabbukum such is allah your lord la ilaha illah there is no god except him khaliqu kulli shay He is the creator of all the things. Fa'abudu. So what is the logical result? You must worship him. You must obey him totally. You must love him from the depths of your heart. All these three things go to make ibadah. Some mode of worship to show your reverence and respect. Then love. You must love him more than anything else. And then total obedience. Three things joined go to make ibadah. Fa'abudu wa hu ala kulli shayin wakil. And he is the guardian and responsible for everything. La tudlekuhul absar. Sights cannot comprehend him. Our eyes, our sight cannot comprehend him. He is invisible. Our sight cannot comprehend him. La tudlekuhul absar wa hu ayudlekuhul absar. He comprehends the sights. He is seeing you, but you can't see him. Wahoo, Latif al Khabir, and he is the subtle one, Latif. You cannot comprehend him. He is beyond that comprehension. But on the other side, he is Khabir. He is aware of everything. He is aware of everything, but you can't know him in his person. You can't see him. You can know him only through the attributes. That's all. Amal to billahi kama huwa bi asmaihi wa sifati. What is his person? How is he like? What is his form? You can't see it. It is beyond your perception and beyond your conception even. Kad ja kum basairu mi rabbi kum. O mankind, the enlightenments have already reached you from your Lord. This is enlightenment. This is how He is introducing you to Allah. He is telling you his attributes. Basayr, enlightenment has come to you from your Rabb, from your Lord, from an Apsar of Al-Nafsi. So, so whosoever sees, so he sees for himself. Waman Amiya. And whosoever closes his eyes, becomes blind, doesn't want to see. Fa'aleha. So it is going to harm him and none else. وَمَا أَنَا عَلَيْكُمْ بِحَفِيظٍ And I am not a guard over you or a watch upon you. Let us wait. بند کر دیجئے آپ. مِنْ يَعْلَمُونَ And in this way we are rotating our revelations. We are changing our modes of expression. We are, we are telling you things, the same things in various ways. وَلَيَقُولُوا So that these unbelievers say, you have learned. No doubt you are a learned person. وَلِلُبَيِّنَهُ لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ Even if they don't accept, they will accept that you have learned and you are a knowledgeable person. وَلِلُبَيِّنَهُ لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ And so that we make it clear for those people who have the knowledge or who want to have the knowledge. اِتَّبَيْ مَا أُوْهِيَا إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكُ Follow whatever has been revealed to you from your Lord. La ilaha illahu. 
How many times it is being repeated? La ilaha illahu, la ilaha illahu. This is Tawheed. There is no God except Him. Far is Anil Mushriki. Then just turn away your faces from these people, the associators of something or someone with Allah. Walau shah Allahu maashraku. Hey Allah, had Allah decided and will, they couldn't do any shirk. Whatever sin somebody is, is committing here in this world, it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the freedom of choice. If he wanted to perforce bring us to the right path, who could go to the wrong path then? So this is because for testing. This life which we have given you in this world it is a testing period. Ulzume hasti se to ubra man in de habab is nea khane me tera imteha hai zindagi. And for this imtehan, for this imtela, for this trial, for this testing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the choice. You can go this way, you can go this way. Imma shakira, ma imma kafura. If you want to behave as grateful to us, okay. If you want to, to behave as thankless person, okay, go ahead. If he had decided not to let you go that way, you couldn't go. وَمَا جَعَلْنَاكَ عَلَيْهِمْ حَفِيزًا And we have not appointed you, O Muhammad, as their keeper or as their guardian. وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِوَكِيلٍ And you are not responsible about them. You are responsible only for conveying to them the message of Allah. Preaching to them the revelations that are coming to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rest of the responsibility lies on their own shoulders. وَلَا تَسُبُّوا الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسَبُّوا اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرَ عِلْمٍ And don't abuse and call bad names to those deities whom they are calling or worshipping except Allah. Although they are false. But you shouldn't call bad names to them. You shouldn't abuse them. Because then what will happen? These, you know, ignorant people, فَيَسُبُّوا اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرَ عِلْمٍ they will in retaliation abuse Allah. And they will use bad names for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this they will do without any knowledge. كَذَلِكَ زَيَّنَّا لِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ عَمَلَهُمْ In this way we have made the actions and deeds of every community seem beautiful to them. Their own religion, their own dogmas, they, they seem very good to them. So if you just, you know, annoy them, and if you abuse their gods and goddesses, false goddesses, although they are, and they have no reality, but then they will react and retaliate, and they might abuse Allah. Summa ila rabbihim arjiyahum. Then to God, to Allah, to their Lord, is their return. For you know, behum bima kanu yamalun. Then He will inform them of what they were doing. Baqsamu billah jada imani. Now this is the point that we discussed last night in detail. And they swear by Allah the most earnest oaths. Lain jat wa ayatun. If some miracle comes to us, if Muhammad can show us a clear miracle, visible miracle, palpable miracle, layu manun nabeha, they will definitely believe in it. Then they will accept Muhammad Sasam as Prophet of Allah. Qul in namalayat wa inna Allah. Tell them, all the miracles and signs are with Allah. In, in his command only. It is his power. Now the address is turning towards the Muslims. I told you that it might have been that some of the Muslims might have thought. Then what's the harm? If they, are, if they are demanding a miracle, if a miracle is shown, maybe some of them, you know, come to believe. Or at least they will have to shut their mouths. And you know their argument will be finished. But here Allah is saying, وَمَا يُشْعِرُكُمْ You don't know, O Muslims, أَنَّهَا إِذَا جَاتْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ That even if those miracles are shown and they have come to them, they will never believe. Because that is not the real reason of their unbelieving. They know from their hearts, from the bottom of their heart, that their, this Qur'an is from Allah. It cannot be composed by any human being. When thrice, rather four times the challenge has been thrown to them, in, in these surahs, in Surah Yunus, in Surah Hud, in Surah Bani Israel, and then for the fourth time in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبِ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَاتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّمْ مِسْلِ And they could never dare to meet this challenge. So actually they know it by heart, that this is from Allah, but they don't want to accept it. Why? 
Then their, their position, they lose their positions. Their vested interest is gone. Then they will have to obey Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This subordination, that is not acceptable to them. وَمَا يُشْعِرُكُمْ And you can't, you don't know it. What thing will make you know? أَنَّهَا إِذَا جَاءَتْ لَا يُمَنُونَ When those all signs, even if they come to them, they are not going to believe. وَنُقَلِّبُ أَفْفِدَتَهُمْ وَأَبْسَارَهُمْ كَمَا لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهِ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً and we have overturned, or we shall overturn their hearts and their sights. As they didn't believe for the first time. This is a very basic philosophical ayah of the Qur'an. You know, when some truth dawns on you, and your heart testifies this is true, if you accept, it's okay. If you don't accept, you reject. But out of arrogance. Knowing that this is true, this is correct. And I told you it happens to us. Many a times we are in an argument, we are arguing among ourselves. And during the course of argument I feel that the point of view that he is presenting is correct. But if I accept it means I am defeated. He is victorious. Well, I am not ready. And then I start arguing and arguing, going to the left, to the right. Although my heart is telling, no, you are doing wrong. So actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, when the truth dawns upon you, you jump at it. If you reject it, then you know the capability, the faculty of recognizing the truth will be taken away from you. This is what we call disuse atrophy in, in physiology. You know, these eyes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to see. If you tie them up, cover them up, for about two, three months, the sight will be gone. Because you are not using it. This joint is to move. You put a plaster to the joint, after a few months, this capability of movement will go. It will be just frozen. If you don't use anything which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, then the capability of that thing is withdrawn by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given human beings the capacity and the capability to recognize truth. This is true. Now if you accept it instantaneously, it's good for you. Your capacity of recognizing truth will increase. But if you decide to reject what your heart has told you it is correct, then this, you know, faculty, this capability is withdrawn from you. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نُقَلِّبُ أَفْرِدَتَهُمْ We shall overturn their hearts and their sights. كَمَا لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهِ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ Because of that, that they didn't believe in it for the first time, when the truth has dawned on him. And actually this process reaches its, its climax. A man reaches the point of no return now. That is what Allah calls, we have put a seal on their heart. Now he cannot reach. He cannot go back. Because he has reached the point of no return. And we shall leave them in their rebellion, advancing blindly. Go now. Go as far as you can go. You want to go. We have put a seal on your heart now. You are free to advance in this evils and all these things as far as you like. وَلَوْ أَنَّنَا نَزَّلْنَا إِلَيْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Now because they were demanding miracles, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just as He had told the Muslim, وَمَا يُشْعِرُكُمْ أَنَّهَا إِذَا جَاءَتْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Now this thing is explained in this next ayah. وَلَوْ أَنَّنَا نَزَّلْنَا إِلَيْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Had we sent upon them the angels, وَقَلَّمَهُمُ الْمَوْتَى Or even the dead people, would have come out from their graves and talked to them. Believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is a true messenger of Allah. وَحَشَرْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ كُلَّ شَيْنْ قُبُلًا And even if we had gathered before them all the things face to face, مَا كَانُوا لَيُؤْمِنُوا إِلَّا يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ They couldn't believe except if Allah permitted. Now because they had gone to that extent of no return, Allah is not permitting them. They will never be permitted now. 
the seal had been put on their hearts and curtains had been you know thrown before their eyes we have it in the very first section of surah al baqarah inna allazina kafaru sab'una lahum anzartahum wa lam tumzilhum la yu'minun khatam allah wa la qulubihim wa la sam'ihim wa la absarihim ghishawa wa lahu adhabun azim now they have gone beyond that point they have they have crossed the point of no limit so now all the miracles even what they demand if they are shown to them they are not going to even, to, to believe walakin aksarahum yajhalun most of them you know they are following their passions and emotions wa kadhalika ja'alna li kulli nabiyyin aduwan shayatin al insa wal jin a very important ayah and that is why we ourselves a point for every nabi for every prophet enemies satans from the humans as well as the jinn we have also the point could abu jahl oppose muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam if allah has not permitted him to do it well la hawla wala quwwata illa billah nobody can do anything if allah doesn't permit him to do it could abu jahl oppose him could abu jahl op- or persecute him could abu lahab do any harm to muhammad could umayyah ibn khalf beat bilal radhiyallahu anhu no. his arm might have been paralyzed the moment he was to strike you know uh, hazrat bilal but no allah gives them the freedom go ahead test our, our believers test their courage test their steadfastness no and test their forbearance wala wa kadhalika ja'alna li kulli nabiyyin aduwan shayatin al insa wal jin yuhi ba'dhum ila ba'dhin zukhruf al qawl wa ghurura they inspire one another with gilded adorned speech in a deception wala sha rabbuka ma fa'alu if your lord had willed they could do it when we when we believe in it not even you know any leaf can move without the permission of allah subhanahu wa taala so they were permitted by muhammad by allah subhanahu wa taala those people who were persecuting why you will find you know in the next ayah fazarhum wama yaftarun so leave them alone o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and their forgings and concoctions whatever they are saying wale tasga ilayhi afdatul ladina la yu'minuna bil akhira why have we given them this freedom why this freedom of persecution why this freedom of going towards the wrong path so that the hearts of those who don't believe in hereafter they incline towards them you know you can understand this phenomenon as you know electrolysis salt is there in a solution form you pass the current it is broken into ions positive ions going to this side negative one going to decide now this process of electrolysis is happening in this society there is the dawa from muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam revelation of quran is coming now whosoever are pure of nature the right the positive ions they will accumulate towards muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and whosoever are negative in their nature perverted nature they are the negative ions you know they have to go to the other side but if there is no electrolysis these things will not separate they will remain as one so allah wants that there should be polarization those who love truth they should go to one side those who love falsehood they should go to the other side and for that purpose you know this process of electrolysis and this agitation is going on in this society with the permission of allah وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ عَدُوًّا شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنِّ يُوحِي بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَى بَعْضٍ زُخْرُفَ الْقَوْلِ غُرُورًا وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ مَا فَعَلُوهُ فَذَرْهُمْ وَمَا يَفْتَرُونَ وَلِتَصْغَى إِلَيْهِ أَفْضَلُ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ هَيْ أَجِنْ نَوْتْ دِي مُوسْتْ دِسَائِسِيْ ثِينْ إِذْ وَذَرْ يُوْ هَيْ سَمْ بِلِيْفٍ آخِرَةِ and if you if doesn't have any fear of akhira any idea of akhira no idea of resurrection then you know then you are absolutely lost in this world then quran becomes meaningless for you 
the servant of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his dawah becomes meaningless to you. That could have no effect on Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab, etc. Because they were absolutely engrossed and lost in, the, in this world and the lusts of this world. So that they may delight in it. And so that they should gather and earn what they are gathering and earning. Again, a very searching question. Should I seek another authority, another judge, except Allah? It is who, it is he who has sent down on you this book, which is very well explained, very fully explained. But and those whom the book was given before this book, the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, they very well know that this is the truth from their Lord. As we have read, you know, they recognize Muhammad just as they recognize their own sons. Nobody can make a mistake in recognizing his son. You know, the Buhera Rahib, he recognized Muhammad when he was only 11 or 12 years old. And he told Abu Talib, his uncle, take care of this person, this boy, because the Jews, if they come to know, they will harm him. This was the warning from Abu Hira. And there were people who recognized him. The Heraclius, Emperor Heraclius, he recognized him. Nagus, he recognized. And about the ulama of Jews, Quran says many a time, Ya Rifunahu Kama Ya Rifunabnahu. They were waiting for the last prophet. But actually, and they had recognized him. But out of only this jealousy that he is not from among, amongst us, they are the biggest racist group in the world. No more racist than Jews. Racist. Because this is a racial religion. This is one race. It belongs to one race. They say we are the, the human beings, complete human beings. All the other who appear to be human beings are actually animals in the form of human beings. They are boems, they are Gentiles, they are not full human beings at all. So this racism, you know, this that became the hurdle in their way. أَفَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ يَبْتَغِي حَكَمًا وَهُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكِتَابَ مُفَصَّلًا وَالَّذِينَ آتَيْنَاهُمُ الْكِتَابَ يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُنَزَّلٌ مِنْ رَبِّكَ بِالْحَقِّ فَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ So you should not be among those who have any doubts, who inculcate any doubts. وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا And the word of your God has reached perfection and completion, both in truthfulness and justice. لا مبدل الكلمات هي. There is none who can change his words. بهو سميع العليم. He is all hearing, all knowing. وإن كنت أكثر من في الأرض. And if you follow the majority of the people on the earth, يدلوك عن سبيل الله. They will lead you astray from the path of Allah. It's very important, Aya. You know, if you believe in Popular sovereignty. What does popular sovereignty mean? The opinion of the majority should prevail. And Quran says in Tute Aksara Man Fillarb. Majority or minority? They are not the criterion of truth. The truth is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down. So the democracy that Islam will have will be limited by the injunctions of the Quran and the Sunnah. Within those limits, you can have a majority vote, no harm. Well, this is also permissible, this is also permissible. Let us decide by majority vote. This drink is also halal, this drink is also halal. Which one we should serve in the party that we are arranging? Well, majority vote can decide it, no harm. But we can't make anything which is haram, even 100% can't declare it to be halal. That authority is not given to any aksariyat, to any majority. In Tote, if this majority becomes final verdict, if they have the authority, you will look on Sumerillah. They will take you away and astray from the path of Allah. In Yattabiruna illah one. Because this majority doesn't follow except the conjectures. Why in whom Illah and they are just guessing. They don't have any knowledge. 
so the knowledgeable people, you know, who know the book of Allah and the Sunnah of, of the Prophet sallallahu well, they can decide whether something is halal or haram. That is why I said, you know, in my lecture which I gave on the Islamic structure of the Islamic State, that the Parliament has the right to legislate, but within the limits of the Kitab and Sunnah. And whether something has exceeded the limits of the uh, uh, Kitab and Sunnah or not, it will be decided by the judiciary, not the majority. The experts are sitting over here. They will decide whether you have exceeded the limits or not. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ هُوَ عَلَمُ مَنْ يُذُلُّ عَنْ سَبِيلِ مَنْ يَذِلُّ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ Verily your Lord very well knows who has gone astray from his path. وَهُوَ عَلَمُ بِالْمُحْتَدِينَ And he very well knows also those who are rightly guided. فَقُلُوا مِمَّا ذُكَرِ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ بِآيَاتِهِ مُؤْمِنِونَ Now in these two ayat, because we have read, you know, there were superstitions in the Arabic society, in the Arabian society. Some animals, you know, because they have been dedicated to such and such thing, and such, you know, this, this she, camel, has given birth to so many you know, children, offsprings, etc. Now they are haram. Now nobody can touch them. Nobody can, nobody can eat their flesh. Nobody, nobody can ride them. So all these superstitions, they were the man-made laws, having no roots in any revealed book, in any law. So uh, even, you know, after coming, becoming Muslims, you know, because these things keep on haunting. Because for so many years, you had the idea in your mind that such and such animals, you can't eat the flesh. So even after having Islam, just as we, you know, people, most of us, we have converted from Hindus to, to Muslims. And those Hindu superstitions still haunt us. They go on haunting us. And we, we can, you know, see among our beliefs and uh, at least practices. If, uh, maybe you don't say it out. But, you know, in practice, you, you remain aloof from those things, you know, which were forbidden in that background from which we are coming. The same was the case for some of the Muslims. Although Quran had declared nothing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not declared anything, any such thing. These things have no roots in the divine law. But even then they were reluctant. فَقُلُوا مِمَّا ذُكَرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ بِآيَاتِ مُؤْمِنِينَ Eat from it. But whatever is halal, as declared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah's name has been taken over it, then you must eat it. وَمَا لَكُمْ أَلَّا تَعْقُلُوا مِمَّا ذُكَرَ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ What has happened to you? What is to you? You don't want to eat on which the Allah's name has been taken? وَقَدْ فَصَّلَ لَكُمْ مَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ He has already detailed to you what he has made forbidden. You have to abstain from the haram only. Whatever is haram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained to you. إِلَّا مَسْتُرِرْ تُمِلَيْهِ Even among from those which are forbidden permanently, if somebody is constrained, there is nothing to eat, and he is dying of hunger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has very leniently and graciously given you the permission to save your life by taking something from that. وَإِنَّ كَسِيرًا وَإِنَّ كَسِيرًا لَيُذِلُّونَ بِأَفْوَائِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ But the majority of the people, you know, many of them, they are taking people away from the path of Allah due to their wishes, due to their concoctions. These are their wishful thinkings. بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ Without any knowledge, without any basis, without any argument. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ هُوَ عَلَمَ بِالْمُعْتَدِينَ and your Lord is very well aware of these, aware of these people who are exceeding the limits. And give up, forsake all sins, whether it is in open or it is in secret, hidden or evident. All sins you have to give up. Those who are earning sins, they will be recompensed, they will be rewarded, they will be punished for that which they have been gathering and earning. وَلَا تَعْقُلُوا مِمَّا لَمْ يُسْكَرِ اسْمُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَإِنَّهُ لَفِسْتُ And don't eat from that on which Allah's name has not been taken, has not been mentioned. Because that is, you know, that is a rebellion against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now it is for the where willfully, intentionally you don't take the name. But you know, as we have read in Surah Al-Maidah, 
the the zabiha if rightly slaughtered then the the animal which has been slaughtered it must be permissible in itself not this wine <laughs> even if you slaughter it according to the strict islamic law it is not going to become halal and permissible but the goat or the calf etc etc which are permissible to take their flesh now if they are slaughtered by a jew a people of the book or a christian but slaughtered in islamic way cutting the the soft parts of the neck and leaving the the spinal cord and the vertebral column intact then you can take it although the name of allah has not been mentioned on it but if willfully somebody is avoiding that means it is wrong by naula fis wa inna shayateen la yuhuna ila awliyaihim li yujadilukum and the satans they inspire their friends their agents li yujadilukum so that they should argue with you no a very interesting argument was you say this animal died by himself by itself it is haram who put him to death allah so an animal put to death by allah is haram and whom you sacrifice whom you put to death it is halal how come there is an argument <laughs> so that argument was given because they used to eat the flesh of these dead animals you you will read in surah naam also even you know dead born even to a, to a she goat a dead child is born or to camel they used to eat it so maita for them this they think it is it is halal allah has killed it what's the harm but the sharia islamic sharia has declared it to be haram why because the blood remains in that body in the tissues and blood is haram one of the main things which have been made which have been prohibited is blood wala taqulu mimma lam yuskur ismullah alayhi wa innahu lafisq wa inna shayatin la yuhuna ila awliyaihim li yujadilukum to argue with you wa in ataatubuhum innakum la mushrikun if you obey them if you follow them then you also become associators with allah subhanahu wa taala then you also become one of them aw man kana maitan fahyaynahu now imagine a person who was dead allah subhanahu wa taala has brought him to life but which is that he was dead spiritually his soul and spirit within him was nearly dead dormant asleep absolute unconscious allah subhanahu wa taala has brought him to life now his soul and spirit is also active aba man kana maitan fahiya na ho we have revived him we have brought him to life spiritually wajalna lahu nuran yamshi bihi and we have given him the light with which he is walking this nur is quran his soul has awakened from the slumber and now allah has given him the light also now he can walk he will walk you know in different aspects of his life he will act as a muslim as a mu'min so actually keep this one kaman masaluhu fi zulumat is it is this example of this person is like the one who is in darkness less of a kharij minha and he is not coming out of the darkness he wants to remain in the darkness you know all the people in the pagan arabs they were spiritually dead because no prophetic teaching was with them no sharia was with them no book was with them so actually spiritually they were dead but some of the people allah subhanahu wa taala they brought, he brought them to life now they have iman their souls are now alive and now allah has given them the light this book quran sharia and they are walking in the light of this book and others are they want to remain plunged in the darknesses kaman masaluhu fi zulumat laysa bi kharijin minha zalika zuyyana lil kafirin ma kanu ya'malun in this way whatever these unbelievers are doing it has been made <coughs> beautiful for them they think we are okay wa kadhalika jalna fi kulli qaryatin akabira mujrimiha in and in that way we have appointed 
in every township, very big criminals, Abu Jahl, like Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab, layam kuru fiha, so that they go on devising plots against the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is the same subject, you know, which we read before. وَكَذَلِكَ لِكُلِّ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍ عَدُوًّا شَيَاتِينَ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنِ In the same way, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا فِي كُلِّ قَرْيَةٍ أَقَابِرَ مُجْرِمِيهَا You know, the idea could have come to some of the moments, some of the Muslims of Mecca. Why these people are given this liberty? They are persecuting us. They are leading the people astray, innocent people. They don't know, but they think these are our leaders. They are more knowledgeable. They go to Syria, they go to Yemen, they know this world more than we know. So we have to follow them. So they are leading the, the silent majority or the common masses. They are leading them away from the path of Allah. So why this liberty has been given to them? So Allah Ta'ala is explaining. This is because we are testing everybody here. Unless there is also evil. Evil on one side, good on one side. What is the testing then? If there is no evil in this world, no falsehood in this world, nothing, no sins, then what is, no temptation for any sin, no persecution for going towards right. So what is the, what's your credit then? So that is the, the philosophy. So that they should devise plots and schemes and they should plan how to, you know, forbid people from accepting iman and faith. وَمَا يَمْكُرُونَ إِلَّا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Whatever they are devising, it is going to be against their own souls. They will be doomed themselves. They will be thrown in the fire of hell. وَمَا يَشْرُونَ But they don't have the understanding. They do perceive not. وَإِذَا جَاتُمْ آيَةٌ قَالُوا نَنُّوا مِنَا حَتَّى نُوتَى مِسْلَ مَا أُوتِيَ رُسُلُ اللَّهِ And when the signs come to them, now what are those signs? These ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which are being revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They say, قَالُوا لَنْ نُؤْمِنَا We will never believe in it. حَتَّى نُوتَى مِسْلَ مَا أُوتِيَ رُسُلُ اللَّهِ Unless we are given what was given to the former prophets. The miracles, that type of miracle. The visible miracles. The palpable miracles. Even if you don't show them to us, we are not going to believe. Allah is more knowledgeable about where to place and at what level to place his messengerhood. Now this ayah, the idea which has come to my mind is that here it doesn't mean that whom to give messengerhood. Because they were not, you know, arguing against the person of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The argument was that we must be given the miracles. So it means the level of messengerhood has been changing. There was a time when humanity was in infancy, in childhood. Children have to be given some toys to play. So they had to be shown these miracles, you know, visible miracles. They couldn't understand things through their intellect because mentally they were not up, uh, mature as yet. But now when humanity has come of age, it has become mature intellectually. Now the miracle that has been given to them is the intellectual miracle. Ponder over it, understand it, dive deep into its meaning, it will show you the path. Something within you, your own soul and spirit will testify to the truthfulness of this book. And you will find a testimony from within you that the source of your own soul and the source of this book is the same. So much is the harmony between human nature and the teachings of this Qur'an. Now for his messengerhood, he has put a different level. Not of those, you know, which was in the infancy period of humanity. Very soon, these criminals who are plotting against Allah and His deen, they will, they will, they will have humiliation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sagarun, humiliation. Wa'azabun sharidun, and very severe punishment, bima kanu yam kurun, due to these plots that they were devising against the truth. فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ وَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلِسْلَامِ May Allah, may all of us among them, make us, 
من يريد الله هم سيفر الله ديسايدز تو غايد تو دي رايت باث يشرح صدره للاسلام هي اوپنز هيز هارت بايدنز هيز تشست فور اسلام You know, he sees that something within him is readily accepting what Allah is saying. This is called opening of the chest, sharaf sadr. May you read Allah who be khairan. We we have another ayah of this, such verse. You know, may you read Allah who and yahdiyahu. This is the hadith. May you read Allah who be khairan. You fakke who fit din. Whomsoever Allah wants to give some good, He gives them the deep understanding. He gives him the deep understanding of deen. In the same way, for my yuri dillahu an yadiyahu yashrah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He opened and widened his chest for accepting Islam. For my yuri dan yudillahu, and whomsoever he has decided that he will remain on the wrong wrong path, yajalhu yajal sadrahu doyikan harajan. He makes his chest as if it is closed and constricted. Kan nama ya saadu fi sama. As if he has been made to ascend into the sky, he has to strive, and he is, you know, with difficulty he is going up. Kazale ka yajalu Allahur Rizza. In this way, Allah Taala pours abomination upon those Allah Ladin Allah Yuminun upon those who don't believe. Wahaza siratu Rabbi ka mustaqima, and this is the right path of your Lord, which is straight. قَدْ فَصَلْنَا الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمٍ يَذَكَّرُونَ We have explained our ayat to people, for people who want to be reminded. لَهُمْ دَارُ السَّلَامِ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ For them are the, for them is the house of peace, abode of peace near their Lord, with their Lord. وَهُوَ وَلِيُّهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And Allah will be their protector because of the Deeds that they have been doing. The Yom Ayashal Hum Jamian, and just imagine, and bring to your mind the time when Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will gather them all, all the jinns, all the humans. They are standing before Him on the Day of Judgment. He will say, Ya Mashar Al Jinn, O community of jinns, Qadis Taksar Tum Min Al Jinns. You begged many from among the Humans, you could hunt many, you could beg many. Is that correct? Wa kala aliya ubnalins. Now those humans will feel insulted, and they will say, "Rabbana istamta baaduna bi baadin." Oh, our Lord, we exploited each other. They used us, we used them. They used them, you know, because kahins, you know, they use these, these, in these jins. To bring the news, and on the basis of those news, on those prophecies, they do business. They have the money, so we exploited them. They exploited us. Islam ta abadun abe abadun wa balagna ajalan wa balagna ajalan nazi ajal talan. And now, the time that we had fixed for has for us, we have reached that time. Qal al naru maswaqum. Allah will say, Now, fire is your abode. خالدين فيها and you will remain in it forever. إلا ما شاء الله except those whom Allah wishes and who are this exception because to the hell will go the unbelievers also who absolutely rejected the faith. But those of the believers also whose good deeds were lesser than the bad deeds they will also be thrown. But then they will be, after having the punishment, the requisite punishment of their bad deeds and sins, they will be taken out. So that is why here is Illa Masha Allah. Khalidin Afiya Illa Masha Allah. Inna Rabba Ka Hakimun Alim. Verily, your Lord is all wise and all knowing. Wa kazalik alwali baadu walimina baaga. And in this way, thus we make. Some of the evil doers, as friends of others, they become friends to each other. The shayatin min al min al jinn and shayatin min al ins, they become friends to each other. They behave as agents of each other. The maqanu yaksebun, due to their earnings, due to their deeds, due to their earnings, they become mutually friends to each other. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from the friendship of shayateen, from among the humans as well as the jinns. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim, wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayat wa zikr al-Hakim. Allahu Akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number, 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together, we can make a difference.